Hi, I'm Lindsay Maddock, the Wells County Extension Agent, and today I'm here with Jeff and Leanne Schaefer from New Rockford, North Dakota. We're going to talk about early weaning calves. I think early weaning is, is one tool in the toolbox to be used in several applications. You know, if you want to market your cows early or in a drought situation, especially like it we're in this year, I think early weaning is absolutely an option to be on the table. And you talk about early weaning, everyone's interpretation of early is, is, is very broad. You know, you can go from, we've done it as young as 30 days all the way up to 120 and, you know, ideally probably that 90 to 100 days is probably quote unquote early weaning, but it, it works just fine. Well, the benefits of for early weaning is depending on the situation for your pasture or um, time of year. For us, we're, we also uh, farm as well. So our time frame really gets busy. We have a lot of row crops. So our fall, uh, once we start harvesting, um, tends to go late into um, November, December, sometimes on, on corn harvest. So we'd like to get the calves weaned early. They'd be in the lot and we don't have to worry about getting them uh, from pasture. So for us, our early weaning is before row crops start and get them um, off. Also gives a chance for that cow to gain back, you know, get in good condition for over the winter. So we are, seem like we get double benefit for that. I think another advantage is once you pull that calf off that cow, her nutritional requirements get cut in half. You know, and if you're in a situation, drought or, or otherwise, and, and, and feedstuffs is tough, it is beneficial to get that calf off that cow put that cow on a maintenance diet instead of a lactation diet, and you'd be amazed at the cost difference. And one part of that too is if you have them weaned, you can be having them growing, and you can pull that trigger anytime to send them to, to market. So if the market takes off, you already have them ready to go load the truck, and they're out there instead of needing to round up or um, you know get them back. And if, if they want them to be weaned to come to the sale barn or if they want them um, you know, mauling calves depends on, this gives you flexibility of when, how long you want to hold on, how long, how early you want to sell them, but at least you have some options. Hi everybody, I'm Jana Block. I'm a Livestock System Specialist with North Dakota State University Extension. And I'm here today with Brett Henderson, who's a producer in the Hedinger, North Dakota area. But we're here today to talk about early weaning as part of a drought management strategy. Mm -hmm. This pasture we're in looks pretty good right now, but yeah, there's others around new. that have been hit a little bit harder um, by the drought. And you've implemented early weaning as a management strategy on your operation, regardless of drought status. So can you tell us a little bit about why you do that and kind of the experience you've had over the years? At, at some point, 40 years ago, we started weaning in October. Um, and then about 25, 20, 25 years ago, we pushed our calving date later. We used to calve in March. Now it's predominantly April, May, and we wean the first week of October. And I guess for us, it, it fits what we want to do. We do background them at this point for 90 days after that weaning, but it, it gets the cows in better condition for us going into fall after PGing and weaning, getting ready for winter. Um, and it takes some stress off pastures. So you're weaning those calves right around five months. Some of them might be a little bit earlier. Yeah, I, I would be the youngest, the youngest of them would be about 135 days. Um, the oldest calves on our cows are probably uh, pushing 180, 185. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably the spread. Okay. So in a drought year, have you ever moved that up even further? Or? We have. In 2017, and I, I guess this year is yet to be seen, but it's a possibility, we weaned everything mid-September. Um, the pastures were heading in the wrong direction, and and so we, we weaned them all then. For our operation, the cost benefit of early weaning is just less less requirements from a, in a pasture from that mature cow, as we're trying to get their body condition back up. Um, for, for the winter months, it's, it's tough to put on condition in the middle of winter. Um, so that for us is the biggest thing, just to get them, get them weaned and get them, get them out of here, let the cows get back to uh, getting ready for winter. To me, you wanna make sure and give them plenty of space to eat comfortably. Early weaned calves or weaned calves generally circle in a pen. 
So you try to put that feeder in, in water in, in some place where they're going to stumble across it, literally stumble across it, just to say, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing here. And, and that seems to help a lot. We always put in a lick tub. So that would be something that they would always seem to find, whether they found the feed bunk or the creek feeder at any time. They would always seem to go to that uh, lick tub. So we would do usually a, uh, a mineral tub or you could do a stress tub in there or something to give them a little bit of energy. But get that uh, licking action would create saliva, Get their, uh, keep their stomach working, keep the buffering in their stomach going. So then they'd be thirsty and then they would go to feed instead of getting too shrunk down that they wouldn't know what to be looking for or even hungry. And I truly believe that salvation production increases appetite. So anytime you can stimulate appetite on these young calves, they've got a rumen, but it's not necessarily functional. So we've got to get that rumen functioning and going. And with that being said, <clears throat> you know, there's several opportunities, several products out there for, for a ration for these early wean calves. Um, we personally like a complete feed and there, there's several out there, but I like it when that calf takes a bite of something, everything that calf needs is in that is in that product and you know <clears throat> it's probably going to cost you over a dollar a day to do that but I'll tell you what you know when we're talking about early weaning to me it's it's not so much what it costs it's we want a healthy functioning rumen calf moving forward to put on feed I, th I think that is so critical I think sometimes cost enters into it and I don't think it should be you know the the complete feed program is probably only going to be 10 days in 10 days on that window of that calf that's the most critical 10 days of that calf's life and I, I don't think we can forget that and sometimes I think that's overlooked on price so sometimes and I personally have done it if you try to uh, skimp on costs through those 10 days it will cost you more money in the end so just keep that in mind I'm not promoting any one product but I just think a complete feed with a lick tub access to clean water is very critical once you get past that 10 days it seems like that calf is 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 eating and ready to move on to any kind of diet. The other reason I like that starter program is even if you're crip fed in those calves, doesn't mean every calf is eating. And we don't know that, you know, and I've learned that probably the hard way. So when we get them into a, a lot confinement area and we can see each calf in there, we know if those calves are eating or not. So it's so critical to get every calf eating, not just the top end. When we wean for the first seven, seven to 10, maybe even 14 days. It's uh, sh long stem grass hay, um, nothing grain based for us, nothing with alfalfa if we can find it. Um, and that's just free choice. Um, and then a salt block, and we, we do use some lick tubs and uh, uh, an easy to get to source of water. Um, so the younger, smaller calves can, can get to it at some point. It's not too high for them. Um, and that's for the first few weeks, that's, that is what they, they get with us. So some of the things that, that we have found to be beneficial is just to make sure that um, they have ample access to water. So that some of those fountains are set for a much taller calf than what these are. So, you know, we've gone to putting uh, mineral tubs below the drain hole. So you pull the plug on that water, fill that tub several times a day. It just seems like once that calf figures out there's water in that tub, all of a sudden they lift their head a little bit more and they realize that there's water up above. Um, tire tanks, even on a dry lot situation, you know, whether you're in a drought situation or not, I think access to clean water, it goes back to animal science at NDSU. It's, it's uh, not said enough, we need access to clean water. So oftentimes you got to put fill in there and make sure that that calf can get access to that water if it comes up. Um, I, I just think that's so critical. We bunk feed, we do have bunks um, after they're done after we finish up and they've stopped bawling and you know get on a round of shots into them we do use a you know uh, early calf creep pellet and try to work with them getting a bunk ready bunk broke probably one of the challenges uh worth early weaning on the health side of it is is dust pneumonia you know and we could fight dust pneumonia in the drought year even you know i think sometimes on some of these pasture areas you know where the grass gets short there's dust and those calves are picking it up but for sure in a dry lot situation you know we fought dust pneumonia before and and uh, our vets know it and, and we work closer with them and we try to be proactive on that um, but it's absolutely something you have to watch and in all fairness i've run into dust pneumonia and fall wean calves too so you know sometimes we don't want to wean when the weather is going to be bad and and so i think some of the same 
health issues that you experience during a normal weaning period, you're going to experience through the early weaning period. That's the other thing you fight sometimes, whether you wean early or later in the fall, oftentimes it could get hot in that lot and those calves aren't used to that black dirt and that heat. So if we can get some kind of grass area that's secure so you don't have jailbreaks, I, I think that's very important. And even if not, um, spreading um, straw on, you know, in the lots or something just to cut that black out and get it to have something so it's not bouncing the, the heat of the sun off of it. Help, you know, lower that temperature, just get those calves a little bit more comfortable. Disadvantages, um, you've got to make time to do it. You've got to be set up to do it. I am not talking to anybody out of doing it. Um, you just, you just got to go do it. Um, get in contact with NDSU Extension, a veterinarian, come up with a plan. That's probably the biggest thing is, is develop a plan. You want to plan on herd health, you want to plan on nutrition, you want to plan on the facility, and, and the more eyes on that, the better. I mean, everyone can bring something. We like to talk about teams. You know, as diverse as we are, we have a lot of team members, and, and the more eyes, the better. Um, you don't want to overlook something on here, and it's an awesome tool in the toolbox, but it's definitely worth looking into. Just to look at all the variables that are out there, uh, this gives us an opportunity to look at something that probably we haven't looked at and so maybe not look at it as a negative but as a positive we are we always have opportunities around us and maybe we don't take advantage of them and this is is now a new opportunity facing us so look at it and explore the options that are out there and just the different markets we hear some people are trying to find grass you know further away um, that's an option look at um, so early weaning that's an option just to be open to explore different ideas that might help your operation just develop a plan, get your team members together, think through all options. Don't close the door on any one option. Um, not any one plan will work for every beef producer out there. It, it, it just won't. But little bits and pieces of everyone's plan will absolutely incorporate into everyone's plan. Um, early weaning is, is, a, is an excellent tool, especially in drought years, and uh, it's worth your consideration with your team members. When you have these early weaned calves, um, what is your strategy as far as marketing? Do you go ahead and feed them out to what you would consider a normal weaning weight and then sell them? Or are you retaining those calves? Or what does it kind of change depending on the year? It, it changes. We've, we've done a little of, well, we've done a fair amount of different things over the years. We've, you know, uh, we've weaned them uh, re and fed them for a while and then finished them at a feedlot. And, and now we, we wean them background them and, and try to shoot for that first week of January sale. So roughly 90 days. If you wean them early, you're looking at 100, 105, 110 days. Um, the replacement heifers, the red and black females, will keep the whole time, you know, and then try to get them back in our herd. Um, so I guess for us, it's it's less about targeted weight, more about time. Just shooting for uh, that early January sale. And at times, if we're worried about it and we have like a a steer or a open replacement heifer, something that's not lactating, we'll we'll put them in the pen with young calves. It's it's kind of a you know an adult or you know parent figure for them to latch onto. Because once it uh, once your yard is quiet and they've done balling, then everything spooks calves, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have something in there. I think that they can automatically gravitate to in times like that because um, you don't. You don't want them to spook and injure themselves. So for somebody that hasn't early weaned in the past, but might be thinking about it this year, what would be your advice to them as far as how to prepare or things to think about? Well, I, I think, I think you'd, you want to make sure you'd have the feedstuffs lined up. Um, I mean, we've, we've found it incredibly important with long stem grass versus alfalfa. I mean, that's it's alfalfa is fairly common and it's common in a mix, but if you can find just just grass hay it, it works way better um, you less chance of fighting bloat especially in young calves whose rumen is still working on developing and everybody kind of approaches it different some guys sell off the cow and some guys sell calves that have been weaned and what we found i think the weaned calf is a good product to sell kind of everybody has their approaches and in their you know what they can and can't do but it's not it's not something people should be afraid of if you're not used to it because it's not a bad process i mean you're going to fight a little sickness 
varying on conditions. And even if your conditions are perfect, you're going to fight some of that. And you want to have the feet around to do it. But it's not, it's not something that people should shy away from, you know, just because they're not, they're not used to doing it. It's, right. it's not bad. You're going to need help because you're going to run into stuff that you don't understand. And, and you know, I'm not a, a cattle nutritionist. I can guess and I can use what people have done for the last 50 plus years but you know I mean at some point you get to evolve beyond that um, and same with the health same with uh, you know you put your cattle on a health program that starts with shots either at birth or branding and you know we, we do two rounds of false shots but that's not everybody but everybody seems to have an approach or a, uh, a way they handle vaccinations and that's that's a good way to do it I mean you want the professionals there to help you We're here with Pete Van Bedef from Van Bedef Dairy, and he's going to talk a little bit about how they handle young calves and, and work their way towards early weaning. As we know, dairy operations thrive on, on utilizing early weaning strategies. A big thing for us was having a starter that entices calves to eat it. So uh, in the beginning, we started with a palleted starter similar to this, and the calves didn't really like the taste, so they would stay away from it longer and we've switched to a starter that's got a corn flake, plus it's got some molasses in it. So that really entices them more to start eating that. And once they start eating it, they'll on their own start to increase that daily. And then as their milk, as we cut back their milk, they'll increase their starter intake even more at that point. So a bit of a textured feed of it rather yeah. than that pellet. That seemed to make a big difference for us, yeah. Once they get to this stage here, three, three to four months old, they, they go to a pelleted, it's still a starter pellet really, and then with some hay. And then from that point, they'll transition to a TMR, and then we top dress with that same starter pellet. This is an 18%, I believe, and the starter that we start with is also an 18%. It just has some corn flakes in it and the molasses is the biggest. It's, it's a textured feed, like you yeah. said. Up until about four months old, when they switch to the TMR, it's all they can eat. We put as much out there as they will eat. They they don't go. They don't won't have empty buckets in the hutches, and the the bunks never empty here. The only other thing we touched on it a little bit is fresh water. Make sure that they have clean water available to them all the time. That's a big thing too. When they're not getting milk anymore, they need to drink water. And if they don't have fresh water, they're not going to drink it. So we we provide clean water twice a day for our calves in the hutches and we're cleaning water bowls on a regular basis. Mm -hmm.